Coach Weiss, the Able Body Experts, and we're moving this Coach Em Up clip into the classroom. So we're going to use the whiteboard here, and we're going to uh, call this the Squat Revisited, because I think a lot of people are getting the wrong idea of our of our posts about the bench press and the squat for specific purposes, Coach. So we want to explain to them in uh, more graphical, scientific terms what we're actually talking about. So here's our basic graph, and if I put a little F down here and a little T over here, what are we talking about, Coach? Well, that looks like the strength curve to me. Exactly. Any, any little textbook that I've read and my limited textbook reading. Right. <laughs> so basically what we're talking about here is what's known as the strength curve. And within the strength curve, what we're talking about usually looks something uh, along those lines. I don't draw very well. But what we're talking about is an eccentric emphasis to a static emphasis or a transition emphasis into a concentric emphasis. All right? So that squiggle usually for most people looks about like this when you consider force and time. Okay? And the goal of any athlete for any sport, for any reason, is to make that look like that. It's a sharper angle on the transition. Exactly. All right? And that's force and the time. Now, how does that, what does that have to do with squat? Well, in terms of development, what I just put, I'm turning that into a check mark, doesn't matter. When we're talking about development, you're not talking about starting strength. You're not talking about speed strength. Okay, those are all athletic concerns. So when we're visit, revisiting the squat, we see two positions. Again, I don't draw very well. Most squats will look like this. Okay, that's a basic stick person squatting. This is the angle of their back. This is the angle of their hips. And this is their leg position. So as you can see in the force vector strength curve here, there's a lot more emphasis going through where, coach? A lot more through your uh, lower back, your hips, and even into the hamstrings and glutes more so. So your legs are basically acting as stabilizers, all right? And that's a, a power kinetic chain squat, all right? Within the, within the strength, within that transition to try to build a power base for athletes. Now, there's also this kind of position, all right? And what we see here is someone maybe in a squat machine or uh, what's the apparatus coach? Uh, a safety squat bar safety or even, squat a, bar. even a front squat. Front squat, the back much straighter, the hips in line with the back. All right, there's no angle. There's no different force vector angle, what we call starting strength there. So there would be a lot more emphasis where in this one, coach? You're putting a lot more emphasis on your quads and stuff there and taking it off of the, off of the hips and off of the lower back, the hamstrings. So within the chain, what we have is more overload on the quadriceps and less involvement of the hip, glute, low back, whereas in the power lift, okay, less emphasis on the quadriceps, more emphasis on the hips, glute, and lower back. Now, what's the one limitation? The one limitation is when people are naturally weaker and they don't have a good squat position, what's their natural tendency, coach? Natural tendency is to go more forward and then turn it into a what I like to call a, a, yeah, a modified good morning. A or modified something. good morning, <laughs> something like that. And that's different than what we're talking about here because that's about weakness, which tells someone they're using too much weight. Okay? Now, here's the crux. Coach, we're looking at our two models here. Which one do you choose when you're doing performing squats in a workout? Well, I would choose both, to be honest with you, depending exactly. on what my goal was. Exactly. Both. Neither one is wrong. Neither one is right. It depends on the emphasis of the program and where they're put into the program. A lot of times people, we do a video clip to explain one thing, and they think we're automatically negating the other. Yeah, it's you, not a matter of right and wrong here. Yeah, you don't have to hate chocolate to like vanilla. Okay, we're just explaining how this works in the strength curve. So kinetic chain work, yes, you want to be able to use a load emphasis where you're going to load from the ground up to the head, but when you do, you're going to get a lot more power generated through the hips, the low back, the glutes, okay? And the quads are going to be mainly stabilizing, which is still great because it's the best way to build a power base. 
okay? But if you're interested in just isolating the quads within a squat movement, then you want more of this kind of face. And to do that, you have to be able to squat, okay? You have to be able to go ass to grass with a straight back. If not, you've got to start here, okay? So, a basic power emphasis because the force vectors give you more leverage in the bent position, more power from all your muscles, okay? And the more isolated squat version, more isolation and overload on the quads, less involvement with the glutes, hams, and low back. Which one's more viable? They're both viable. It depends on the purpose of execution. So this is the squat revisited. This is our little strength curve graph. We can use this in other ways uh, down the road to explain more, more about how the uh, strength curve works so you can understand this stuff better. Coach, any comments on what we're talking about here? Yeah, I think it's, it is important to emphasize to people that if you're, if you're doing a complete training program, you should have both of these in your arsenal. Like, people need to have a overall body strength with this emphasizes more, and they also need to, to have uh, quad isolation exercises as well. So it's a simple, more complicated than this it can be, but it's as simple as back squats and front squats. Putting both of those in your workout is not going to hurt anybody, whether you're a power lifter, a bodybuilder, Olympic lifter, whatever. Because they both have tremendous metabolic exact effects and kinetic chain work. Yeah, and the neuromuscular effect that they have as well. Holding that barbell in front of you, holding it on your back, it, your, your muscular and your neural system are affected in different ways with those two simple changes. So this is the squat revisited. Two versions of how people tend to squat. Uh, depending on how advanced you are and what your purpose is in a load emphasis workout which is for strength not necessarily for development you'll tend to see this angle of contraction because it gives you more leverage to lift more weight all right when your concern is just about overloading quadriceps you tend to see more this kind of angle that's why we have squat machines that allow people to produce that kind of angle all right and it's less of a load emphasis and more of a muscle target emphasis, and that's why we say train the muscle, not the movement. All right? So this is the squat revisited, a little classroom style for you. Hopefully that helps you understand a little more from the Able Body Experts.